the slow walk No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up I don't ever slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't Hey team, hope you're all doing well. Today's topic, I want to go over how to prepare for a marathon in 20 weeks. And I've always said that a longer buildup is always going to set you up for success better than a short, like say, 8 to 12 week buildup. Of course, you can still get in great uh, physiological shape, mental shape in, in a matter of two to three months. But the longer your buildup, the better off you're going to be because it does take about 28 days for the body to adapt any stress load you're placing on it. So as I always said, you know, the, the patience uh, aspect of preparation, especially for the marathon distance, uh, is absolutely vital. If, you, if you're allotting sufficient time for yourself to get into superior physical shape as well as mental shape, your chances of success in this event is definitely going to rise. And it's a longevity uh, issue here, okay? How long are you willing to work? in order to get to that flow state, that, that point where you're running effortlessly, where you're hitting splits throughout the race, where you're starting and finishing your marathon at goal race pace, and not just running goal race pace for maybe the first 14 or 15 miles and then drastically slowing down. You prepare for, in terms of how to, how to prepare for a marathon in 20 weeks, I, I think that the first two weeks, or the first two months of a Five month buildup should be focused mainly on aerobic base mileage as, as well as introducing some moderate efforts uh, in terms of either tempo runs, you know, working at tempo effort, which is, you know, right, running around 88 to 92 percent of max heart rate, uh, getting the heart uh, accustomed to running at faster paces, but also make sure that in a five month buildup, you're, you're much more patient in the early stages of your buildup because. Doing a three to four mile tempo run in the first few weeks of a, a five month buildup is going to be very challenging. I mean, it's a challenging to anybody, whether you're an elite athlete, national class athlete, um, or, or you're a total beginner. You want to work your way uh, from going three to four miles at tempo effort to, uh, you know, increasing the duration of that tempo run. You know, when I was at my peak, when I ran prior to running 219 for the marathon, uh, I was doing tempo runs between 10 to 12 miles in length, and I didn't do that overnight uh, in a five to six month buildup, in this case, 20 weeks. I wouldn't start working on getting that duration out to around 10 miles until maybe around week uh, eight, eight or nine, okay? And, and sometimes it took between 10 and 11 to get to that point. And then Again, so you offset your, your tempo run uh, efforts as well. One week it might be five miles. Next week it might be three miles to recover, then go up to six miles, and then go back down to maybe four miles, and then go up to seven miles. Again, you, you allow yourself some time to recover from those particular efforts. Um, again, the world's best distance runners are running anywhere from around 30 to 40% of their weekly volume at anaerobic threshold or faster. Jakob Ingebrigtsen is an example of that. All the Ingebrigtsen brothers out of Norway are very uh, focused, heavily focused on threshold training. So the majority of their running is at threshold effort or faster. And of course, Jakob's been running for years since he, I think he was around 12 years old. So it's that that duration, that consistent effort over many years, that they, they can get to a point where you can set a new personal best. I mean, it took me from running from 1992 when I first started running in high school as a high school freshman, all the way to 2007 to run a 219 marathon. So several years, over a decade to run that, that at that time. So it's not something that marathon success doesn't occur in a matter of a few weeks in, in most cases, in a few months, okay, you can still get great results in a five-month buildup. I do believe that a 20-week buildup for the marathon is optimal time frame. I, I think a lot of athletes, uh, if, if they're trying to cram all their training in, in say, an eight-week training block, and they haven't done any aerobic mileage prior to starting that eight-week marathon block, that's going to be very hard for them to adapt to the stresses they're placing on the body. So always start a 20-week marathon training plan, have have a few weeks, at least two to three weeks of easy aerobic mileage built into, you, you know, having done that prior to starting a five-month buildup. 
Okay, and and again, the first two months of a of a five month block of training, you should be doing like moderate, like I said, moderate type uh, introductory threshold type workouts. Uh, examples of that might be like five times two minutes uh, moderately hard on the roads with a two minute jog, or maybe like ten times one minute hard, one minute easy fartlek uh, workouts, shorter tempo runs. Um, again heavily focused on gradually building up your mileage. Okay, I think as a marathon runner, uh, optimal mileage, and again, this is gonna be different for each athlete, but in most cases, most athletes can do very well at the marathon distance running around 40 miles a week up to 100 miles a week, and some athletes will go over 100 miles a week. But again, it's, it's, it's much more um, advanced athletes that can handle that amount of volume and again, you can still be doing a ton of aerobic mileage and still run a great marathon and not be doing much, any, hardly any speed. Okay, there's some athletes, I'm, I'm an example of that, I need to be doing speed, speed workouts. Um, if you want to improve in, in this particular event, yes, you do have to get accustomed to doing running at paces down toward your 3K to 5K race pace. So that again, that's going to help build it help build your ability to clear lactic acid more effectively as you're running and as you're racing. It's going to improve your your um, your your heart. Obviously, it's going to be much more efficient and more effective. Uh, your ability to clear, you know, your lactate tolerance is going to be improved because you're running at paces significantly faster than you're aiming to run at in the marathon distance. And again, that's one VO2 max workout should be done per week. And when you're running via 2 max, you're running close to 100% max effort, okay? 95 to 100% of maximum heart rate. Uh, so it, it's going to be tough to do those types of workouts. Be patient with yourself. Don't be in a rush uh, to get in phenomenal shape because it's just not going to happen in this sport. Uh, I've had several setbacks in the marathon distance as well. Uh, I had many times where I even questioned if the marathon was my best event. You know, I had, when I was in high school and college, all I was trying to do was get under four minutes for the mile, try to break 14 minutes for 5K, never came close to that, ran 422 for the mile, 1418 for the 5K. So, uh, it, it, but I found the that m more of how I was built was for marathon running. So the same with you, continue to work on your speed. You know, the faster you can get in the shorter races, 3K, up to the 10K event, even in the half marathon, the faster you can get in those events, it will help you uh, to, it will not only help you to race more effectively in the marathon distance, but you're not gonna be so intimidated by the marathon distance either, because again, you've challenged yourself at various dis different distances, and you have spent a sufficient amount of, of your training time running at your anaerobic threshold or slightly faster than that. And again, that's gonna help improve your body's lactate tolerance. You wanna, uh, be very cognizant of, of the amount of stress you're placing on the body, but also focusing on your recovery. Jog on recovery days, easy days. That's what they're there for. Okay, so take off the watch. Don't focus so much on heart rate all the time. Okay, it is still important to, to get a gauge of it. Um, and heart rate monitors definitely are a plus because, again, it will help you to ensure that you're not running too fast on easy days or too slow on harder days. Okay, so, I, and again, I think 20 weeks is optimal time frame. I think in the marathon distance too, as you pay attention to the other fundamentals as you go into your, your races, run the tangents in the race. Don't run any further than you need to. Hydrate well in training. Get accustomed to finding out how much your stomach can handle in terms of fluid, in terms of gels as you're running, doing your long runs. And practice that in, in doing your long runs because when you get to the race, you will have done, you've trapped, you've, you've done this over and over again and you become much more accustomed to finding out how much you can handle. And, and if you can, try to find those, those Nike shorts. Um, so there, there's a bunch of Nike running shorts online that you can find that actually have uh, pockets on both sides of the shorts as well as behind the shorts. And so you can place your gels in your shorts and then ingest those gels. You know, four to five gels in a marathon uh, will definitely ensure that you get those between 100 to 150 calories per gel directly into your bloodstream as you're racing. Okay, you don't want to run out of glucose. I mean, we at any given time, and this is per Dr. Joe Vigil, PhD, one of the world's top distance running coaches. It's in his book, Road to the Top. He states at any given time, we only have about 1800 calories 
of glycogen stored in the body. So we have much more fat storage. So you want to utilize what we have much more of, and that's fat storage, and, and conserve what we have much less of, which is glycogen, which is carbohydrates. So make sure that you're, you're training, you're, you're running longer for your long runs. Get that long run out to around 18 to 23 miles in length. That's going to help you burn fat more effectively. And spending time training, like I mentioned, at, at faster race pace, faster than race pace, that's going to help you also to help conserve and conserve glycogen and also utilize fat more effectively. So I hope this video in terms of how to prepare for a marathon in 20 weeks is helpful for you. If you have any other questions regarding this, feel free to leave me a comment below. Let me know what's on your mind in regards to the marathon training you're doing. Um, and if you have any other uh, questions or concerns, definitely leave me a comment below. Uh, thank you so much to my subscribers, both new and old. I thank you so much for uh, all the comments and all the questions on the live streams. Um, and I really appreciate your your input as well. You know, you're just a, you're just as much of a, a part of this YouTube channel as I am. So thank you so much for all that you all do as well. So with that, I'll uh, wish you all the best in your training in racing, and I will talk to you all in the next video.